Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Michael Michael, and I'm here with the recording of the first game of the Hidden Cup tournament. And in the green, we have Judith Collins uh, playing as the Goths, and in the purple, we have Jerry Brownlee playing as the Japanese. Very interesting civ picks for this very, very small, tiny map of Socotra. This is the qualifiers, and whoever wins this goes through to the next round. There are no second chances. So let's start the game and have a look and see how these guys are playing and immediately right off the bat I can see everyone has been maybe practicing their build orders we have two houses coming right up and queuing up villagers very good to see although uh yes villagers popping out people have been practicing now this is a tournament of 16 people and they all got pseudonyms from New Zealand politics and I actually have no idea who Jerry Brown Lee or Judith Collins is. So as they get their eco up, we'll just have a quick look at the map. So you can see uh, Judith Collins, very very close golds to the town centre. This will be quite handy. Um, and a little bit forward stone, but a back stone as well, so that's very easy to defend. Uh, not a lot of walling potential. And this hill up by the berries might be a little bit of a problem later on in the game if any archers come up and hit the, archer, uh, hit the villagers on the berries, but not a bad map. Very open at the front though, that could be a problem if Jerry Brown Lee decides to do some early aggression. Let's go look at Jerry Brown Lee. Very nice back wood area, there's a lot of potential to keep your villagers safe cutting trees back here. Back gold, back stone, very very standard. And a hill on this side, that's going to be annoying if, if there's... Oh, Jerry Brown Lee saying 8. Might get a little bit of chat. A little, little bit of back chat between these two players, hard to tell. But like I said, yeah, hill over here, that could be annoying on these uh, this back gold and the other golds on the front. So, uh, Jerry Brown Lee might have a bit of difficulty uh, walling up and defending himself. So I'd recommend, based on this map, oh, going straight for the elephant. Is he going to lose a vil? No. So already... Villagers being put into the town centre at last instance. This is a player who might actually know what they're doing here. Again, we don't know who these are, but I can guess. And we have two or three players who might be a little bit of a cut above the rest. And I wonder if Jerry Lee Brownlee is one of them. Also, Judith Collins. Gathering their elephant as well. Maybe there's... It's hard to tell. I don't really know how good everyone is. So, here we go. House about the right time. You can see they're both neck and neck, both on 12 villages, so no one's been idling their TZ. Very good early games from both of these players so far. What else can we see on the map? A couple of relics scattered about. And I wonder how their scouting is going. Let's check on Jerry Brown Lee's scouting. Oh, someone's potentially using auto scout. Or not. This is a bit auto scout you're going over here. It's very square around their base. Does make you wonder. Whereas uh, if we go and check Jude of Collins, they look like they're they're definitely manually scouting because their scouts still Oh maybe they're not. Maybe this is also auto scout, just hasn't done as good of a job. Houses on the front, and you can see Jude of Collins, she is preparing a wall. She is gonna build a great wall out of houses and barracks to try pre prevent any kind of attack coming on this big open front here. Oh. Is she going to garrison her vills and try to take out the scout? She is! This could be first blood! And Jerry Brown Lee, just like that, loses his scout and loses the ability to know what Judith is up to. And that could be really key, because did he scout the barracks? He did not. Which means... Judith Collins might opt for a bit of a, some early aggression with some militia. And Jerry Brown Lee won't know what's coming. Will Judith... She is. She is going to take that opportunity. You can see the first militia coming out at six minutes into the game. That's a nice early, early drush. We call it a drush because it's a dark age rush. So the first one's come out now. Very, very tight. And look at this. Using the scout to, to, to scare in the zebra. Judith Collins... Definitely knows what they're doing. You don't see that kind of level of play from Jerry Brown Lee. Like Jerry Brown Lee, idle villages. Ooh. Where's this one going? 
building another house, probably a good idea. Oh, that drush is ready to three militia now. Judith Collins knows what's going on. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised, Judith Collins might be Jamie. Or Jock. Probably Jamie. I've never seen Jock's push in Zebra. Makes me wonder. She is housed though. <laughs> and here comes the drush. Now we all know Jamie has terrible map awareness, so if these militia accidentally go underneath the TC and die, um, then Jamie confirmed. <laughs> Continuing of that house wall, looks like Judith Collins will be the aggressor's guy. He's looking for a nice easy spot. Or she. Judith Collins is. And he's gonna get a villager pick here. <gasps> Cherry Brown Lee hasn't got loom! These villagers don't have any armor on them, so loom costs 50 gold. Remember to get loom from the uh, 20. <laughs> Jerry Brownlee does know their taunts. Makes me wonder. What is 23? I can't remember. More attacks. You gotta get loom. These villagers are just gonna die so fast to the man at arms without loom, and you can see that here. This trash has already been outstandingly effective. All this idle time. The almost dead villagers going out to the to the to the zebra over here, which is a really good idea to mill your hunt. But when there's a drush and you're losing villagers, you, this isn't safe. And these these men uh, militia will just come around and hit these hunting zebras. They might even hit the zebras and kill them to get the food away. I have to say, it, Jerry Brown Lee is under a lot of pressure right now and having a really tough time. It's very micro heavy. Um, Judith Collins will be spending a lot of time up here with the militia. Let's see how her eco is going. Nothing too wild here. She's not put anyone on gold, so I think this is going to be a very simple, uh, you know, go up to 30 plus villagers and then do a fast castle kind of scenario. You'll note that no one is in the feudal age yet, which is very surprising for Jerry Brownlee. Finally made his own militia to counter the militia of Jude of Collins. These could have come out a lot earlier, I think. But that's alright. Little bit of a scramble for us. All these, all these, like, here we go, look. Five villagers building houses. Not the best luck. Here's these vulnerable, vulnerable villagers on the deer. No loom still. And they're running away. It's alright. Jerry Brownlee has seen it. He's gonna run them away in time. Look at that. And in come the troops. Not bad. Here's a little fight. All of the militia on one. That's very good. Oh, micro to wipe. <laughs> Green is a good player, eh? Look at him go. Takes one out, one of the militia, and micros the rest away. Very good. Very safe wall coming up. Judith Collins making goths great again by building a big old wall. Idle villagers here on the front. I have to say. I don't want to call it too early, but it's looking tougher and tougher for Jerry Brownlee. As Judith Colin slowly starts to creep ahead in the score due to that early aggression, it's really paid off. If you look at the villager difference, uh, Judith Collins is on 28, Jerry Brownlee's on 27, so that's actually kind of interesting. It means Jerry's done a really good job of uh, keeping their town centre working and, and keep producing, I mean, mind you, five of, five of Jerry's villagers aren't working. But that's pretty important to uh, to note that they, he still has the same amount of population of villagers, even if they're not working. Uh, he can put them to work and he hasn't lost as much as he can years. But now, Judith, Goths, gone into the next stage. So something I should say is Goths have cheaper men-at-arms. Or cheaper cheaper of these little guys of the clubs. They're going to turn to men-at-arms shortly, no doubt. They're militia at the moment. But they're much cheaper for Goths. That's kind of like their gimmick. Goths are all about... Um, Pumping out these militia. Here they come. Will they get more villager picks? Has Jerry Brown got loom? Jerry Brown does not have loom. He doesn't care about his villagers. He's going to let them all die. They don't need armor, he says. They're also very idle still. He's struggling, isn't he? Needs more wood or something. So something you can do is, in your mill you can click a button, which means that your villagers will automatically receive their funds. Can be quite handy. You need the wood for it, but... Oh, and here's the man-at-arms upgrade. Oh no. 
So those three militia at the very start of the game have just paid off. This is one of the ones from the very start. He still hasn't died. He's still killing villagers. This is not looking good at all for Jerry Brown Lee. And Jerry Brown is not even in the feudal age yet. And you know what? I think Judah Collins will be on their way to Castle soon. Yep, there goes the... We got a market and a blacksmith going up. Plenty on gold. Adding them to food. Lots of farms up. Oh no, Jerry Brown. What is the plan? You need to get to the next age, Jerry Brown. You need to get to the feudal age and make archers. Here's another villager going to go down for, th for free. My goodness. It's not looking good for Jerry Brown Lee. No wonder Judith Collins is the leader of the National Party right now. This kind of play, fighting with villagers against men at arms. I mean, this is all good to do in Dark Age when these guys are militia, but now that they're men at arms, that extra armor and attack just makes this a bit of a, a bit of a free for all. And they easily come out on top. There we go. Town bell is rung. So usually you wouldn't ring the town bell, you just select these villages and send them inside and keep these ones at the back working because it's a bit safer. But Jerry Brownlee has opted for the town bell, which takes his entire... Oh no, look at the wood line! Judith Collins has snuck around the back and sneaking into the rear door of Jerry Brown. And look at the damage, that's going to hurt. I need people on gold. It makes me wonder how much gold does Jerry Brown have? 300 gold! It's a shame. If those villagers were on food this time, it could have been at the uh, feudal age a long time ago. You win this time, Judah! <laughs> and he calls it! <laughs> there we go. Jerry Brown Lee, Frozen the Town, Tell. And frozen the town too, actually. Not much of a town. It never really got on its feet, did it? Um, but Judith Collins, a very convincing performance. You saw luring the uh, zebra in with the, with the scout. Nice control of, of, of her units. This is definitely a top player, potentially. So, high hopes for Judith Collins in this tournament. Unfortunately, Jerry Brown Lee, Holy Roman Empire, Emperor, your cut, cut from the tournament. Hope you enjoyed the first game everyone, and I look forward to showing you the next one.